Mochaye Namaha Om Dambantra 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 Mochaye Namaha Om Shanti 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 Om Peace Peace Hello and welcome That was a evocation to the Divine Healer within Dhanvantre, the Lord of Ayurveda. In ancient times, yoga and Ayurveda, they went hand in hand. Yoga is the spiritual side of Ayurveda, and Ayurveda is the healing side of yoga. Is where yoga's aim was to help us return to our nature so that we can recognize that we are one and not separate. Ayurveda's aim is to make us healthy and strong and bind and body so that we can do our dharma, so that we can do our work here in the world. So that was my little plug for my talk this coming Saturday on viewing immunity through the eyes of Ayurveda. And now we carry on with our practice together. If you don't already have a blanket to sit on, be sure and get that. And if you don't already have a belt, anything that resembles something like this will do, that this, this long or longer will be great. Okay? So we'll open our shoulders so we can lift our sternum. As you know, the world cannot no longer afford for us to continue on in this depressed, compressed state, right? It's absolutely essential that we open and that we become present for life. So that's what we'll work with. We'll begin with the strap long enough, long enough that you can take the arms all the way back and around without straining your shoulders. Yeah, you're just lubricating that multi-joint. And then go ahead and join me on this. So lowering it down, and of course, if you, if you have more lo looser shoulders, then you can go closer. Back and around. And just breathing life force into the upper regions of the lungs. Yeah, right, the lung, the area below the armpits, just below the collarbones, keep all that open. And then as you do this, it's also interesting to note that you are grounded, yeah? This will be a common theme in our practice today. We'll eventually move into Ustrasana, which is camel pose. So it's really important in that pose in particular that the legs be very well rooted, very solid in order for us to open those shoulders and lift the sternum in order for us to go into that back bend. And you could go like this all day, right? There's just so much to benefit from placing those shoulders back where they belong. So having a strap near for those of us who are in this more rounded type of activity throughout the day is whew, so, so beneficial. And then we're going to take another one, bringing the right arm up, your right arm. I'm going to give you a back view and the left arm down. Bring the strap around. Maybe if you have the little bent here, you can use that as a loop, but it's not necessary. And then bring the opposite arm. So before you bring the opposite arm, actually fill it up, bring some opening to that side of the torso and then walk the hands towards one another, but not by forcing anything. It's interesting that the elbow of the top arm be lifting and the elbow of the bottom arm be lowering, but that there's space through the shoulders and the back of the neck as you do this. So carry on in this way. 
Let's see, I'll keep an eye on you. <laughs> I do I do my best to envision you practicing with me. I really do. It helps me immensely. So then here again, that rooting down through the base, right? So in this case, it's the sits bones on the prop, really rooting through that. The inner groins lengthening out towards the inner knees, the outer hips. And then from here, maybe you can walk a little closer, again, without straining and without losing that openness of the shoulders and neck, right? That's really what you're aiming towards. And then as you're done, go ahead and release. Notice, and let's switch sides. So go ahead and bring the opposite arm up. As you bring the arm up, it's coming from the waistline. The whole side body is benefiting from this. Take the hand around the loop if it's there, if there's a loop for you, and then bring the arm down. And then the opposite shoulder, again, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, and then bring that arm around. You may need to lean forward to catch the strap, and you may not need the strap at all, right? So then you just clasp those hands together. But it is very important that the top elbow is aiming up, so that tricep is hugging in. And the bottom elbow is aiming down directly below that shoulder. And then from there, you begin to walk the hands together, maintaining that openness of the neck and shoulders. This could be a little strenuous, yes, for a lot of us, so just breathe through it, be gentle. It doesn't all need to happen right now. It is a process, a delightful one, asking the body for permission to move a little further, to discover more space, and then seeing what it says. Today it may say back off, <laughs> and then you back off and you be there with that. With your presence, you are discovering space, no matter how tight it may feel at first, you will discover more space. And then go ahead and release. And then from here, take one hand down, whichever one, look over the shoulder towards that hand. So you want to start by giving yourself a nice little opening through the neck and then reach the opposite arm up. And as you reach the arm up, same story from the side body. And then begin to walk that hand out to the side and establish a nice solid foundation here from which you can arc the spine all the way around. So this lateral stretch, it's, a, it's giving you more space through the spine, yeah? There's no compressing at the bottom. There's just a support system at the bottom from which you can arc up and around, like a nice giant beach ball. Deep lengthening, long neck, shoulders back, as if the back of the head was supported by your hand, yeah? And you're not just opening the gates of the side ribs as you discover and allow for more and more space there. You're also doing that for the back ribs. Neck is long and free, maybe a little bit further. You're not straining, just with the breath, checking in and saying, can I allow the body to fold a little further and experience a little bit more? That's the conversation. And then back to center. And just taking a moment to notice how enlivened that side has become by simply giving your attention to it and gently moving with it. It's a great tool. <laughs> And then from here, root down, or just walk the hand at first to look over. Give yourselves a nice long stretch along the neck. And then the opposite arm comes up from the waistline. And then you're opening the waist, you're opening the side ribs. And you can look up even if you wish. You can stay looking down, it's up to you. The important thing is that the neck be toned here, right? The neck is an extension of the spine, so you do want it toned. Not here, long. And then again, as the side ribs open up more as you lift up and around that enormous beach ball, you are allowing 
more prana to move through each and every vertebrae. And that should feel pretty good. So you can push onto the ground to arc up and around more. And again, push down. Make sure that you're not hugging up those shoulders, but instead drawing them back and down. And then the sternum, where is it? Lift it up. And if you have a wall there, it's so nice to push into it. You discover even more space. And then back to center. And you may find that both sides are enlivened now. So enjoy that for a moment. Now we'll move to the floor. So we'll take our blankets and we'll open them up. Like so. And make sure that there's no wrinkles because you will feel very uncomfortable if there is. And then from here, take your strap and place it somewhere halfway along the line. You're gonna lie in prone position and you want the strap at about this, the strongest upper part of your thigh, okay? So it will be something like this. Of course, you adjust as you go down, as you find your way. So come down into your forearms. And then for me, I need to adjust it down a little bit more so that, so that it hooks down. So you're using that strap as a reminder to do something that is essential to the health of your back, of your lumbar spine in particular, to send those thighs back, back. Send the inner thighs up, thighs back, stretch them back. Then this comes up, okay? Very important, as you soon find out. So then from here, you can just come into Sphinx pose, so with your forearms down, broadening up through the collarbones, lengthening up through the crown of the head, and then bending that le right leg, taking that left arm over so that the forearm is on in this way, and then walk the right shoulder up, the right arm out to the side, and fill up that right shoulder, and catch that foot. Now, if you can't catch the foot, you can also always lasso your belt around, yeah? Okay, but the idea is that you're not doing this. Instead, you're bringing, or nor you're doing this, funny business. You're bringing the foot, best to show you without the strap. You're bringing the foot towards the outer hip, towards the outer hip. And you're doing this as you send the front of the thigh towards your knee towards your knee, as you lift the abdomen up, and as you continue to broaden the shoulders. So there's a lot going on here. So just do your best and breathe. Of course, if you have Virasana in your practice and you prefer that, by all means do. But if your knees are cranky, then this is a better alternative. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then just join me here, yeah? And then go ahead and release that. And let's bend the second leg. Catch the foot again, using that strap if needed, but make sure that the foot doesn't go here, nor here. Instead, the foot comes towards your outer hip. So the front of the thigh is moving towards the knee. And then from there, you're stretching the front of that thigh. And the torso is lengthening up, forward. The shoulders are back. And the back of the neck is long. And where's the sternum? It's also rising. It's rising. And then go ahead and release that. I recommend doing this round, this at least a couple rounds. And then in between, you can do something like this. With the straight leg, Lift up through the inner groin and extend further. Lift up through the inner groin and extend further. Yeah, this is, this is very helpful to, to know which direction you wanna move. So again, lift through, lengthen the leg back 
and lift through that inner groin. Lengthen it back and lift through that inner groin. And then you'd go once again into the bending of the leg, all right? This is where, if you're watching this not live, but post, post um, practice, you can always press pause. So then from here, we will now use the strap to open those shoulders. So the strap remains where it is, right in front of your thigh. You will take your hands to either side of the strap. You will work those legs just as we did a moment ago, inner groins lifting up, but you keep the legs down for this. And then from there, lift the abdomen up, broaden through the shoulders, back of the neck is full, and you rise. And you rise. And you rise. So abdomen lifting from the base. And you release. And let everything go. This one also, you can do multiple times. Highly recommended, especially to strengthen the lumbar spine. For the purposes of today, we're going to move right along. This time, you may, if, you're, if your knees are sensitive, you may want to fold this guy once more. You can just leave it the way it is otherwise. So here... You, I like to have the blanket. We're going to move right in the direction of Ustrasana. I like to have the blanket supporting the ankle because there's this big gap there, right? That feels a little uncomfortable or difficult to push back unless you have the cushion. And then you're going to take the strap as before. If you feel that you need, you may need the strap to be longer. So let's just all of us together place the strap here under the knee, but with plenty, plenty of room, okay? And then from here, same story. As you press down through the fronts of the thighs towards your knees, you're also sending the knees towards the shins, so everything is moving back. With the exception of your hamstrings, the backs of the legs are lifting up into the glutes, so that all of this is well supported enough Go ahead and grab your strap to lift. And so you broaden the shoulders and you lift. The back of the neck stays full. And you feel if you lose the connection with the legs, you're going to dump into your back right away. So back off, root through those legs again, fronts of the thighs moving down, backs of the thighs lifting up. And then the, from the pubis bone, you're lifting lifting the abdomen to the sternum, creating space there, broadening the shoulders, and the back of the neck is full as you go back. Again, you're only going back as far as you can keep the rooting of the legs, no further. Otherwise, you'd strain your back. Backing off as needed, regrouping, rerooting. There should be no strain on your back on this. And then going for it. I don't recommend going into the full pose, but I'm just going to give you a taste of it so that you see it all in action. Rooting, engaging, and then using the hands lightly to lift. But any little segment is worth exploring, you know? Always with foundation first. Fronts of the thighs down, hamstrings up, abdomen, chest, shoulders. So again, you can play with this a number of times. And that will be very beneficial. Yeah. But if there's strain on the back, then you need to back off or just do the one on the floor, which is safer, easier to, to understand the pushing and pulling. So let's go ahead and take Anna Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And as you do, you may find that your shoulders are nice and open in comparison to maybe a previous downward dog that you may have done today or other days. And so really root down through those hands, broaden to the shoulders. 
and then the sit bones are rising up. And if you need to bend your knees in order to accomplish that, by all means. But the outer hips are really lifting and the spine is releasing. So there's no rounding of the spine. If there's rounding of the spine, it's best to bend your knees and lengthen in this way. And take a few more breaths here. Maybe even shake your head yes or no a few times. Engage in the fronts of your thighs. Same story, yeah? Just different shape. And then two, from the abdomen, low abdomen to the chest, space, length. Open that front of the torso. And then from here, come on down. Notice how you feel. We're going to do Marichyasana 1. And um, we want to take that blanket that we're sitting on and fold it once more like so. So this is a tremendous pose for massaging of the abdomen, the liver, the kidneys, all the internal organs, in fact. So any, also any digestive issues that you have, this will be tremendous. And for weight loss, this is really good too because it's, it's activating the agni in the body. So, which we'll talk more about on Saturday. So incredibly essential to vitality, to well-being, to strong immunity. So you're sitting in Dandasana. Notice that I'm moving the flesh out of the way as I bounce from side to side. <clears throat> the legs are engaged. You're reaching out through the inner heels. And then maybe you use your hands to really lift here. And then take your hand to the outer knee on the right leg and draw it in towards you. Now you want that heel to be really close to your hips. So take your hands and push your hips forward a little bit without falling off the prop, of course. And now from here, take your left hand, the hand of the straight leg, and push into it. Actually, may even lean back a little bit, create some space. <clears throat> opening up the knee out to the side and reaching up. So you're creating some space here, some opening here to then come into a forward fold. Now you're gonna come into this forward fold while maintaining the length of the front body, which is a lot to ask for, I know, so just do your best. It doesn't have to look in any form, in any shape. What you do want is to keep that leg straight and what you do want also is to create, to maintain that length. Now that right arm can just hook in front of the left shin. Stay where you are, just so you see, okay? And maybe that's as far as you need to go. There's a lot that's happening here. So you just enjoy that, okay? Pushing down through both hands and inviting the abdomen to lift up and off of the thigh and creating that space as you bring yourselves forward. So this is perfect, this is wonderful. To go into the full pose, you're gonna take it a little further and I'm gonna give you the back view now. <laughs> and you may also want the strap handy for that. So it's okay to bring the knee out to the side for a little bit just to create more space as you wrap around. But then you're gonna take that, that arm that's in front of the shin and you're gonna bring it up and over so that the palm is facing out. And you're gonna take that strap or clasp, yeah? So the idea of having the strap is so that you're not jamming on those shoulders because there's a lot going on here with the shoulders, yeah? So be generous with that. The key is in this pose, to open the left shoulder and to draw it back as you continue to fold forward. So it is a twist. So opening the left shoulder and drawing it back as you fold forward. Again, opening it and drawing it back as you fold forward. And then you have to bring that knee back into the midline as well. Great. So, so good. And then maybe you find that you can bring your hands a little closer together while maintaining that opening 
while you're continuing to draw that right knee in. So you're pressing down through the inner heel of that right leg. And then release. So we'll do the second side. Back to the Dasana. So we're sitting in on the blanket with both legs straight in front of you. Again, the flesh out of the way helps you root more through the sit bones. And there should be a nice long arch here. If there isn't, you could fold the blanket once more as I did in a seated meditation. The thighs are engaged. Or just use your bolster that is there ready for the next segment. Take the hand to the outside of the thigh, draw it in. Walk the foot a little closer and then also walk the hips a little closer to that foot. So here again, you can bring the knee out to the side to lift up. You may even lean back a bit to create some space. Reach up, reach up from the waistline and then from the waistline, bring everything with you as you go forward, as you go forward. You can take the opposite arm to the side to push into it a little bit more. You're not straining anything. You're just allowing the body to receive more prana. And the way you're doing that is you're gently, mindfully asking the body for permission to move forward with each and every breath. It's a simple equation. And you'll prevent you from hurting yourself. And then from here, again, you can just take the hand out like so and just stay with this. You don't need to go any further, but then draw, begin to draw the knee in and continue to create space from the pelvic floor to the chest and drawing the knee in and then finding space on that right shoulder and then begin to rotate through the right shoulder. So that can be it for you, yeah? Or take the hand around, the arm around, find the strap, grab a hold of the strap, and then locating that right shoulder, fill it up, and draw the left knee in. Oh, Yoda, you hot, my friend? Broaden through the right shoulder and draw the left knee in. Broaden through the right shoulder, draw that left knee in. And then the abdomen is lengthening forward, lengthening forward, lengthening forward. Yes. Keep the breath going. Keep the breath going, Yoda. Inner groin. Down. Inner heel. Down. Right shoulder opens and opens and opens. And release. And so now both legs straight. We're gonna go into Paschimottanasana, but we're gonna keep the legs a little bit wide just to liberate the twisting that we just did. The thighs are engaged, there's space here. Reach up and forward you go. So you can hook your hands to the outside of your feet. You can hook the hands to the big toes or you can take the strap. In any case, it's again that idea of the forward fold while maintaining length through the front torso. The head is coming down at the level of the torso, yeah? So the head is not here and the torso up high. It's just at the level of the torso. Continue to engage the front of, of the thighs. Open up the elbows and allow more space between the shoulder blades between the middle of the back. Keep going. Abdomen rising. Continue to lengthen. And then as you're ready, sit back up. And now we'll move into the restorative segment of our practice. If you're not able to do that right now, then I suggest at least five minutes in Shavasana. Namaste. 